Welcome back, Pokemon Trainers. Professor Chaz here, the Lab Coat's on back order, and it is Monday, January 23rd, which means we're actually about a week late. But it's now time for another news update video thingy here on the channel. First thing I'm going to mention is, as per usual, I do have a booster pack, or two actually, to be opening up in this week's video. I was going to have one for last week, but since there wasn't really much news last week to cover, I thought I'm going to hold off until this week, plus other stuff was going on that was kind of hindering my ability to record at that point. So, fortunately for you folks out there, I've built up a couple of booster packs to be opening up. We have Roaring Skies and Ancient Origins, and for your chance to win the Pokemon TCG Online Code Card, as per usual, stay tuned towards the end of the video as I open this up, and I'll give you a question of the day to answer and have a chance to win the code card when I do the drawing on Sunday, which is January 29th, I believe it is. Anyway, let's move on to the news. Actually, no. First, let's talk about the previous question of the day from two weeks back. The question I have given you folks out there was, do you have any New Year's resolutions for 2017, and if so, what are they? So the winner of the Phantom Forces booster pack was... I'm apologizing in advance, because I am likely to completely ruin this name by trying to pronounce it, but... Hoao Raphael? I'm hoping that's decent enough. And they said... They do have resolutions. I will try to get a little more money to travel this summer. And that's actually a very good resolution, traveling to expand your horizons and see more of the world. That's something that I would like to get into as well. Like, I didn't really have much money to travel last year. Maybe this year I'll be able to go to some uh, different conventions and such. I like the idea of being able to go to different conventions in my area and do a video recap and show you folks out there how the convention went for me and the uh, different uh, stuff going on over the weekend. So maybe I'll be able to do that this year. We'll have to see. And congratulations to Hoao Raphael again. I apologize if that's really bad, but congratulations for winning Phantom Forces. And the winner of the Primal Clash booster pack from last week was a viewer named JAG. And the answer was, my New Year's resolutions are first, to build a better deck. Second of all, I like to get Solgaleo GX from Sun and Moon. And as I said in the comment below, you can kind of do both of those at once. If you get Solgaleo GX, put it into your deck, as we're going to see in a moment, or not in a moment, but later on in this video, we're going to take a look at some of the new Pokemon from the Sun and Moon expansion, and Solgaleo GX is one of them. Definitely a good card to add into pretty much any deck, as you'll see what the uh, GX attack says. But congratulations to both winners of last week's code cards, and again, your chance to win one of these two code cards from Roaring Skies or Ancient Origins. Stay tuned towards the end for your chance to answer the question of the day. Have a chance to win one of those code cards. But we've got a decent amount of news to get through. There's a lot of cards that have been revealed. Well, I should say, technically, thanks to the pre-releases that you'll see video coverage of later on this week, basically all the cards of Sun and Moon have been revealed, but there's only a few on the website. We're going to take a look at those, and we're going to save the majority of the other cards until we do the pre-release video on Wednesday. I'm aiming to have it up. But uh, we're going to talk about those cards later on. First of all, let's talk about the Alola Friendly online competition in Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon. The registration is currently open, and it goes until Thursday, January... January? I said January? <coughs> Pardon me. It goes until Thursday, January 26th. You can register your team for the Alola Friendly. Just a basic rundown of this is it's going to be single battles. You can use any Pokemon from the Alola Pokedex, but if they have an alternate form, like a Kanto form, for example, Sand Shrew, Sand Slash kind of thing, you can only use the Alola variant, the regional variant in Alola. So you can only use the Ice and Steel type Sand Shrew or Sand Slash. And I forget the exact details of the battle. I gave it out in the previous news update video thingy. You can also just go on to Pokemon, is it Pokemon-GL.com, I think. Go there and check out the regulations for the Alola Friendly and see if you're able to compete. Now, by competing, not even winning, it's just by competing in three battles, you're going to earn yourself 50 battle points. Now, I don't think I'm going to record these for the channel. I might consider doing it, but my team is not really battle ready for Wi-Fi battles. And I'm going to compete just to earn the points anyway. I'm going to try to have some fun along the way, do what I can, not really go into it expecting to win or even really hoping and trying to win, just doing what I can, really. Although, that being said, I had a pretty interesting Wi-Fi battle just yesterday. I was just on, you know, on a whim. I'm starting to do some of the Wi-Fi battling just to see what kind of stuff is out there, trying not to spoil myself from stuff that is not yet in the playthrough. But had an interesting battle against somebody with an Alolan Marowak, a Golisopod, and what was the other one there? A Pinsir. So, long story short, what happened was I was down to just Prowl of the Lycan Rock and Sonata the Primarina, and a Pinsir comes in. Now, I was expecting Mega Evolution, so I switched from Sonata into Prowl. As it does go Mega Evolution, goes for that Aerial Ace, or was Aerial Ace boosted return attack, did over half damage to Prowl. So at this point, I thought, you know what? There's no hope. There's nothing I can do. I'm just going to go for Stealth Rocks. And as... 
they switch out back into Galisopod, and their Marowak was already knocked out, I get the Stealth Rocks up. And I thought, I think I just won this because the Pinsir had gone down to 25% health after a Moonblast from Sonata. So, the Galisopod knocks out Prowl, in comes Sonata, take an X-Scissor, we survived that. I Oceanic Operetta the Galisopod, which Emergency Exit sends it out, Pinsir comes back in. By the way, it was a Mega Pinsir, I forgot to mention. Mega Pinsir comes in. The Stealth Rock knocks it out. The Lysopod comes in. The Stealth Rock knocks it out. And I won the fight. It was kind of cool, you know? I, I thought Stealth Rock was a last-ditch effort, but it actually won me the fight. So I might actually be okay to do some of these battles, but I'm not expecting to get too far, if anywhere, in the actual competing part of the thing. I'm just going to go in for some battle points, which you're all welcome to do as well. Just earn yourself 50 battle points for free battles, you know? You can spend those in-game on whatever items you want from the battle tree. Now, another important thing. This is information that's already been out there by a lot of viewers, and not viewers, but like uh, players of the game and other Pokemon fans, all about the SOS battles. Now, they have actually uploaded an SOS battle guide on Pokemon.com, giving you some pretty in-depth information about how to go about getting uh, some what they call the SOS battles. Remember how in episode, was it maybe 10, maybe 15, that I was getting so frustrated with all these Pokemon calling for help? As I'm sure many of you are aware, if you're following Sun and Moon information, that the uh, SOS battles are the primary way of getting Pokemon with hidden abilities, max potential if possible, and even shiny Pokemon. So Pokemon.com has gone ahead and broken down the information about how to go about getting these SOS battles, which Pokemon can't call for help, ways to prevent them from calling for help, but ways to keep the chain going. And I think it says at like uh, 30 Pokemon, if you get like 30 Pokemon called in for help, that's when you maximize their potential for hidden abilities and their uh, max IVs. And at 70, I think, random encounters or random call-ins, that's when you max out the possibilities of a shiny Pokemon appearing. So if you're looking for some rare Pokemon, SOS battles are the way to go. And there is a nice comprehensive guide on Pokemon.com to help you with those SOS battles. Now, let's move on to the world of the Pokemon TCG. Again, we're going to wait and talk about the new cards from Sun and Moon in a little bit, but this kind of relates to that. As strange as it sounds, the Sun and Moon expansion does not go on sale until February 3rd, but available now for sale three theme decks. You do have the Forest Shadow theme deck featuring Decidueye, Roaring Heat theme deck featuring Incineroar, and the Bright Tide theme deck with Primarina as the star performer in that one. Of course, these are, I think they're all new cards. I think all the new trainer cards are in there, a new style of energy cards. In fact, I could show you... Ah, it's piled back there. I've got my cards from the pre-release back here, but they're all kind of in a pile. But it's actually a new format for the uh, new layout for the energy cards, which is pretty cool. There's so many different versions of energy that have come out recently, like Generations has the, uh, the stripy horizontal lines, you got the new uh, Evolutions style, which is the original style, the basic style we've had for the um, X and Y season or series, and now there's a new one for Sun and Moon, so you could have so many different styles of basic energy in your deck, it's going to blow people's minds! Probably not, but it's going to look pretty cool. Anyway, those are the theme decks available for sale now, but as I'll mention in this week's uh, pre-release video. There are certain formats required for using these new cards when it's coming to a special play Pokemon event, like an official tournament. You can't use them until the third Friday of the month that the expansion first goes on sale. So not till the third Friday in February will these cards be usable in tournaments. But anyway, moving on we see this is something I mentioned a few, probably a couple of months back, but it wasn't actually revealed or on sale yet. We have two what is it here? Two Pokemon TCG Mythical Collections, one featuring Volcanion, one featuring Magearna. In each of these, you get a full art foil promo card featuring either of the two Mythical Pokemon. In the Volcanion Mythical Collection, you get five more foil promo cards of Celebi, Jirachi, Darkrai, Victini, and Keldeo. And in the Magearna Mythical Collection, you get six foil promos. You get Mew, Manaphy, Shaman, Arceus, Genesect, and Meloetta. In each of them, you also get five Pokemon TCG booster packs and a code card for the Pokemon TCG Online, in which you'll get all of these promo cards unlocked in the online game. So that's quite a lot of stuff to get in each of these collections. Not sure why, but I wonder why Magearna gets six foil promos and Volcanion only gets five. Maybe Volcanion is more powerful on its own. But there is one more thing to mention before moving on to checking out the new cards, and that is... There is an errata for one of the cards from the is it Evolutions expansion. It is for Electrode. Now, the original wording of the Buzzap Thunder ability says, Once during your turn you may knock out this Pokemon and attach it to a Lightning Pokemon as a special energy card providing two Lightning energy. 
Originally, it said it only provides this energy while attached to a lightning-type Pokémon. However, they're going to update it now to say that Buzzap Thunder allows the knockout and attachment to a lightning-type Pokémon, but it says it provides energy while attached to a Pokémon. Might not seem like that big of a difference because you're attaching it to a lightning Pokémon and normally it's going to remain being a lightning Pokémon it's attached to, but what if you were to evolve that lightning Pokémon into a new Pokémon that is a different type? For example, what if they make a uh, Psychic-type Alolan Raichu card that evolves from a, a lightning-type Pikachu? Would you lose the electric, you know, the lightning energy of the Buzzap Thunder Electrode? Actually, now no, you wouldn't, because you're going to be able to keep that on as long as the energy is attached. You could also, for example, if you Buzz Up Thunder the Electrode onto a basic lightning type Pokemon, then Ninja Boy it into a different type of Pokemon, the energy will now stay attached. So that's pretty interesting to note. You could actually, you know, you could do things like Reshiram and Zekrom, Dragon types that require lightning energy. You could. Basically, yeah, you could Ninja Boy a Pikachu into one of these Dragons of Unova, and you'll have two Lightning Energy already attached to it. Throw a Double Dragon on there, suddenly you've got all the energy you need to power up most of its attacks, I'm sure. That's a pretty good idea, actually. Anyhow, that is the new errata for Electrode. So now, we're going to take a look at various cards that have been revealed from Pokemon TCG Sun and Moon Expansion. Let's take a look at the starters, first of all. You see here, Decidueye GX. Most of the cards we're going to look at today are GXs. This does evolve. Now, an important thing I've mentioned before, but I'll mention it again. This time around, Pokemon GX are different from EXs in two ways. One is that they have a special GX attack, which you can see at the bottom there with Hollow Hunt. But a lot of the GXs also have to evolve up from previous forms, which I like. This is what the EX Pokemon used to be like back when I got into this, the collecting the cards. I like that it's coming back. So, Decidueye GX does evolve, from, of course, from Dartrix. 240 HP, it's a grass type. The ability is nice, Feather Arrow. Once during your turn, you may put three damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. Now, this would actually work really well with the Breakthrough Gengar, because I paired Gengar with the base set X and Y, or the X and Y base set Greninja with Water Shuriken. Discard a Water Energy from hand and put three damage counters on a Pokemon. The Gengar in question with Creep Show Attack knocks out anything that has three damage counters. So, Decidueye GX and Gengar could be a good combo. You also get Razor Leaf for 90 damage with one Grass, two Colorless. For one Grass Energy, you can use one Pokemon G, or sorry, one GX attack per game, and Decidueye GX provide, or provides Hollow Hunt GX for one Grass. Put three cards from your discard pile into your hand. Just take back any three cards you want from the discard pile. Very good. Think of that like three Versus Seekers in one go. Or what else would there be? Energy Retrieval perhaps would be a thing too. You can just bring back. Instead, forget the Versus Seeker, bring back three different supporters, there you go. But that is the Sidui GX, let us now move on to Incineroar GX, of course evolving from Cat. Fire type with 250 HP, Hustling Strike for one fire does 10 plus, this does 20 more damage for each of your benched fire Pokemon. Not bad, definitely a good Pokemon for a fire themed deck, and with two fire and a colorless, Tiger Swing does 80 plus, Flip two coins, this does 50 more damage for each head. So you can do a possible 180 damage. But Burning Slam GX for two fire and a colorless. 200. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now burned. So they haven't used burn in a lot of the most recent expansions, but burn apparently is back in flames. Haha. <laughs> and if you don't know how burn works, between each turn, the owner of the burned Pokemon flips a coin. On a flip of heads, nothing happens, but on a flip of tails, two damage counters get added to the burned Pokémon. So let's take a look at Primarina GX, water type with 250 HP evolving from Brione. For two colorless, Bubble Beat does 10+, plus, 20 more damage times the amount of water energy attached to your Pokémon, any of them on your bench perhaps as well, so that's not too bad. And for three water and a colorless, Roaring Seas does 120, discard an energy from your opponent's active Pokémon. Now, the GX attack is, for two colorless, Grand Echo GX, heal all damage from all of your Pokémon. Doesn't do damage to the opponent, but it heals everything on your side, which is not that bad of an attack, I would say. Have a lot of Pokémon on the bench, like if you have ways to manipulate damage on your side, spread it across your field evenly so no one's going to get knocked out, Grand Echo GX heals it all off. That would be pretty decent. Alright, so moving on, we now take a look at a Pokemon we've uh, kind of seen before on the channel. Lunala GX, Psychic type with 250 HP, evolves from, and I still don't know the name, but the middle form of, I'm just going to spoil it, everyone out there knows, Cosmog, something, then Lunala. 
So Lunology X evolves from the middle form. Ability Psychic Transfer. As often as you like during your turn, you may move a Psychic Energy, I believe that says Psychic, from one of your Pokémon to another of your Pokémon. So you can manipulate that around as much as you like. For Psychic Energy, Moon Dice Beam 120, the defending Pokémon can't be healed during your opponent's next turn. And for 3 Psychic, the Lunar Fall GX attack, knock out one of your opponent's basic Pokémon that is not a Pokémon GX. I like how it's worded. It just simply says, knock it out. Don't do damage to it. Don't afflict it with a special condition. Just knock it out. And that's the attack. Very, very cool. So, moving onward onto... They have it organized differently on the site. Let me just skip ahead to Solgaleo GX. It wanted me to talk about Alolan Persian next, but we'll do that in a moment. Solgaleo GX, of course, evolves from the middle form Cosmog. Uh, metal type with 250 HP. Ultra Road is a very good ability. Once during your turn, you may switch your active Pokémon with one of your benched Pokémon. A free retreat every turn with this thing on your bench. Or even active. And for two metal and a colorless, Sunsteel Strike does 230. Discard all energy from this Pokémon. But then, for one metal, Soul Burst GX. Search your deck for up to five energy cards. Not just basic, could be special as well. And attach them to your Pokémon in any way you like. And then shuffle. You can get 5 energy out immediately using this GX attack. Now, of course, the GX attack does end your turn as a regular attack would do, but you can get a lot of good power out there using that Soul Burst GX. And now, another Pokémon GX. This is the sixth one we're looking at today. Gumshoes GX, colorless with 2, one, or two, <laughs> two 110, no, 210 HP, evolving from Young Goose, of course. Uh, the ability, search the premises, is nice. Once during your turn, you may have your opponent reveal their hand. Just look at what they have in hand, you can, you know, plan against it for next turn. For three colorless, Headbutt Bounce does 100, and for one single colorless energy, Gumshoe Chance GX. 10+, plus. this does 50 more damage times the amount of energy attached to your opponent's active Pokémon. So if they only have two energy, you're already doing more damage with a Gumshoe Chance GX than you are with Headbutt Bounce, but if they have anything in addition to two energy, you're doing a lot of decent damage. Three energy is 160 damage, four energy is 210, you can do the math from there. Now the final Pokemon we're looking at is Alolan Persian. Nothing too crazy, nothing too special. There's an interesting thing to note here though. First of all, for it has 90 HP, it's a darkness type of course, evolving from Alolan Meowth. Now I like seeing this because I was curious, how are they going to explain the uh, Alola forms? And they actually just put the word Alolan in part of its name, so technically you could have four regular Persian and four Alolan Persian because Alolan is part of the name. So for what that symbol means is nothing, for no energy, Taunt says switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with your active Pokemon. So for no energy, you have a Lissandre card in an attack of your Alolan Persian. For one Darkness Energy, Claw Ren does 30+. plus. If your opponent's active Pokemon already has any damage counters on it, this does 30 more damage. That could pair decently well with Decidueye GX, putting 3 damage on a Pokemon, and then doing another 60 with your Alolan Persian. But that is all for the new cards that are revealed on the site. As I say, there's a number of new cards back here that I got from the pre-release event, which we will wait until Wednesday to take a look at. But I guess I could just show off. No, I don't want to show off anything yet. I don't want to spoil it. I got a pretty interesting card. I will say, one of the cards that we just took a look at, I do have. But we'll save that for Wednesday. With all that, I do believe we are done with the news update video thingy. It is now time to prepare to open up my two booster packs, Roaring Skies and Ancient Origins. Do you think I'm going to be lucky enough to get a Shaman EX out of this pack? Probably not, but we're going to find out. But of course, first of all, for your chance to win one of the code cards I'm going to pull out of those packs in just a moment, just answer this question of the day in a comment down below and use the hashtag QOTD in your comment. And on Sunday, January 29th, I will do two random draws of the commenters that have left that comment with the hashtag to win one of the two code cards, which I will pull in a moment. Question of the day is, which region in the Pokemon world is your favorite and why? I would say probably for my favorite, I'd have to go with the Hoenn region, I think. Maybe, I don't know, it's kind of a tie between Hoenn and Sinnoh, because I really like getting ribbons for my Pokemon to decorate all the adventures they've been on through the various regions, and Hoenn and Sinnoh have had the most ribbons thus far because of all the contests. I guess I probably would say Hoenn, because the most recent remakes of Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, they added more Mega Evolutions, they've had like the Gen 6 battle engine going on, which looks really cool, so... I would say, at this moment, Hoenn is kind of... I don't know. I really like Alola, too, but I feel like the lack of ribbons kind of just puts it a little bit lower than Hoenn, so... I would give my vote to Hoenn for 
ribbon purposes, for the new Megas that were introduced in the Gen 6 remakes, and just how beautiful it looked in Gen 6. So, I'll go Hoenn for mine. We'll see if Alola decides to grow on me and add a little bit more to bump it up above Hoenn. I know there are some ribbons you can get in the Alola region, but not as many as previous games. But anyway, that is my answer. Again, for your chance to win one of the code cards, just answer that question of the day, hashtag QOTD in your comment. And on January 29th, I'll be doing some random draws for the code cards. But as for random draws, let us now open these packs and see what cards I randomly draw out of these boosters for my collection. So let's take a look at these two packs. We'll start with the older pack first of Roaring Skies, because this has the most potential for Shaman EX. Of course, Ancient Origins does not have that card, but... Again, I'm hyping it up too much. I'm not going to receive a Shaman EX ever. It is not in the cards for me. <laughs> in the cards. I get it. I always make puns without realizing it. Alright, so we'll get the code card off to the side. Secret it away until we do the drawing on Sunday. And let's see what basic cards we get out of the Roaring Skies booster pack as they focus nicely. Starting with a Shop It with Bleh. I love that attack. With a Spiro, a Wingo, a Binnacle. Or Binacle and Pikachu. Uncommon card starting with an Ultra Ball, always a useful card to have. I have a Trainer's Mail, also a very useful card to have. We have a Fletchinder, maybe useful depending on the deck. Reverse Foil card is a Bagon with continuous headbutt, and the rare card, this is it folks, is an Absol. It's a foil at least though. Cursed Eyes is pretty interesting. When you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench, you may move three damage counters from one of your Pokemon, or one of your opponent's Pokemon, to another of his or her Pokemon. This would work kind of well with the Gengar as well, because you could move the damage from like a bench Pokemon to the active Pokemon. Gengar could then knock it out with Creepshell. So that is the Roaring Skies booster. Now let's take a look at the Ancient Origins with the nice shiny Mega Rayquaza on the pack. Foreshadowing for what we're going to find within the pack? Perhaps? Perhaps not. We'll have to wait and see. So make sure the code card is not shown prematurely. I'll slip these around doing the little card trick. I've learned that in the Sun and Moon expansion booster packs, there's actually a different card trick that has to be done. And you'll see in Wednesday's episode, I learn it along the way. All right, so starting with the commons, of course, we have a Meowth. We've got an Eevee, Porygon, a Ball Toy, and a Malamar, which I find is interesting. A Stage 1 being a common card. It's not that bad for a Stage 1 either. Entangling Control, eh, it's okay. Switch your opponent's Pokemon, or switch one of their bench ones with the active one. The new active one is confused. But Trash Tentacle does 30 damage, and put a card from your discard pile into your hand. Take back any card you want using Malamar. Very good. Uncommon cards start with a Dangerous Energy. will be attached to Darkness-type Pokemon. It provides Darkness Energy. Whenever the Darkness Pokemon this card is attached to is active and is damaged by an EX, put uh, two damage counters on the attacking EX. Not bad. We've also got a Porygon 2 to evolve that Porygon up. We have a Rotom, not the uh, Rotom deck, which actually, spoilers, is a card in Sun and Moon. But this is actually not too bad, I think, is it? No, I'm thinking another Rotom. Anyway, Reverse World card is a Flareon with the Flare Effect ability. Each of your Stage 1 Pokemon in play is now a Fire Pokemon in addition to its other types. I really like this. The Eevee evolutions in this expansion each have, like the Porygon, Jolteon, Flareon, each provide their typing to your Stage 1 Pokemon in addition to their own. So you can have a four-type Pokemon, or if you go back sometime on the channel, check out some of my TCG online battles. I used a Golur with the ability that makes it Psychic and Fighting, and with these three evolutions on the bench, it is a five-type Pokemon, weak only to darkness. Anyway, enough about that. Let's look at the rare card of the pack, and it's going to be a Ancient Trait Vespaquin. Not as good as the other Vespaquin, people would argue. The other one has B Revenge, which does a lot more damage, but Theta Double Ancient Trait says this Pokemon can have two tools attached to it. B Drain does 20, and heal from this Pokemon the same amount of damage you did to your opponent's active Pokemon. So if you had, like, say, two Muscle Bands on here, you're doing 60, healing 60 back, and Fury Swipes 30 times, flip three coins, 30 damage times the number of heads. So you could actually put uh, two Trick Coins on there if necessary, too. Make sure you get the maximum number of head flips. Anyway, that is it for my booster packs. And again, for your chance to win one of these two code cards from Roaring Skies and Ancient Origins, just answer the question of the day with hashtag QOTD in your comment down below. Question is, once again, which region in the Pokemon world is your favorite and why? Just answer that with the hashtag. And on Sunday, January 29th, I'll be doing a drawing from the comment section to lucky people to win one of these code cards each. 
So that is going to be it. I want to say thanks for watching today's news update video thingy, everybody. Stay tuned later today in a couple of hours for the first episode of Pokemon Moon for the week. All I'm going to say is some pretty interesting plot stuff starts happening. Now, for those of you that played through the game already, you know what the point of the game I'm at. You know what's going to happen. But for those of you that might not be aware, you're going to want to check this out as well as tomorrow's episode. Spoilers, but tomorrow's episode is way more epic than anything we've done thus far, I think. Although the Lusamine battle in the Aether Paradise was kind of epic. But anyway, I'll let you guys be the judge of how epic it is. Let's just leave it at that. I want to say thanks for checking out today's news update video thingy, folks. Professor Chaz is now signing off, and I'll catch you next time.